Hi, everybody. This is Martha Creek. You can contact me at marthacreek.com. And there's podcasts there and videos there and audio there and workshops and seminars and everything. And nearly every bit of it is free. And you're welcome to come in and, and sample and dial up your luminosity and get your tail wag and whatever you're about in the world. Hopefully you'll find some motivation here today as you listen and learn with us. This is a mentoring moment with Martha and I have a dear friend and colleague, a brother soul, uh, Ron Holdaway with us, who's uh, will sound like he's from Tennessee because he is. And he's actually currently living and serving in the Unity Church in Panama City, Florida. So thank you, Ron, for taking the time to do this, for setting aside this time to, to learn with me and to discuss with me and to put out in the world what you and I are about, which is to do things that are meaningful for our own soul's progression right. and to be creating in the world a world that um, we want to be about and see, a, see more of that in there. So I know that we share a passion for Richard Rohr, who is the executive director and leader and the founder of the Center for Contemplation. And you can find that online, CAC. Is that what it is? CAC? Yeah, CAC.org. Um, CAC.org. And we're both alive right now. And this notion of a universal Christ, of God incarnating as us, and that we are then the hands and the feet, the ideas, the expression of God, and that we've just come off of a, a holiday and we talk about of Jesus incarnation. And I've heard myself say, are we going to talk about Jesus the next 2000 years? And I hope so, because it was a model for how to live this and that it's time for us to do what we were taught to do and encouraged to do and inspired to do and to continue di dialing that up. So start, Ron, with a little bit about your background and how you landed where you have and how this is alive in you. Well, thank you, Martha. And as we were talking just right before we started uh, this conversation, I'm so honored to be here with you. Uh, every time I'm in your presence, I learn and it's just uh, the knowledge that I already know. I do know it. We all do. Uh, it just, it's reinforced. I relearn what I think, you know, what I already know. And you always ask that question. And so you've, you've given me that gift because I asked the people in our congregation, what did you relearn this year? We were going through Advent. And I said, what did you relearn? Because we've heard Advent over and over and over. But what did you relearn this year? And I got that from you. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. So um, I, as you say, I was born, my Tennessee accent just will not, I'm 68 years old and it's not going to leave me. Um, but I was born in Chattanooga, uh, Tennessee, went to college in Cookville and became a mechanical engineer, worked in Nashville for 40 years as a mechanical engineer, and then uh, semi-retired uh, seven years ago. My wife is from Panama City, and so when we, when we were married 20 years ago, she said, I'll marry you, uh, and when you retire, we're moving to Panama City. I said, that suits me. So that's okay. So, uh, so I am the spiritual leader. I'm an LUT spiritual leader in Panama City, Unity Spiritual Center of Panama City. I've been here. I've been doing that for a little over two years. Uh, after Hurricane Michael hit us, we lost our building. Uh, our minister uh, moved, uh, Reverend Joanne Burns, she, she moved back to her home in uh, Albuquerque. And, uh, and then we've, we, uh, we lost our building because we didn't have the funds to uh, uh, to uh, repair the damage to the building. So for a year and a half now, we've been meeting in the, the Jewish temple, which is a blessing in itself, except now COVID has put a stop to that. We're doing all of our classes since, our services since uh, March has been online. So um, when I uh, accepted the, the position of a spiritual leader, I, I told the board, I said, I haven't done this during a, a post-hurricane, post-minister departure, and definitely not a pandemic. So it's um, <laughs> it's been a lot under fire, but I love it. It's what I've been called to do, I feel, and I love sharing um, what you and I talk about, what we know is deep inside each one of us. So what is, what uh, you told me before we started the recording, Ron, that you read and sit with, uh, likely contemplate yes. and reflect on Richard Rohr's writings daily. Yes. 
And so speak about that, like what that means to you. And, and I believe it's a spiritual devotion and a spiritual practice. And I know that we're all doing it in some way. It may be your morning walk or your morning ritual or reading scripture or a daily word or the science of mind uh, um, excerpt of the day. And I want to, you to speak then to your spiritual practice and this daily reading you do, why you do that, and then how you use it after you've taken time for contemplation. So I'm so drawn. And when I found out a bit, uh, Richard Rohr, um, and I can't remember now what was, uh, what was the link for that. But ever since I've heard about him, even just the title of his organization, Center for Action and Contemplation, uh, you know, he says that it's to teach uh, uh, activists to pray and to teach people who pray how to be activists. It's that thing, the combining of, uh, which is a struggle. You know, I, I think we all struggle with that. How do we, what is mine to do in this? And it's even more prevalent now. So I get that by reading these daily meditations. And um, I just read his theme for the year and I forgot it. But anyhow, you can sign up, you can go to cac.org and you can sign up for uh, the daily meditation. As a matter of fact, I copy those and he, he and I, I give him credit for it. I put one of his daily meditations in our email blast every week um, because we send our email blast out to people I don't know and they may not know about Richard Rohr, but CAC. And I put one of those in there because it speaks to me so deeply. Um, so it is part of my meditation. It varies a little bit, but usually I sit in my chair and I have two little chihuahuas and one of them at least will want to sit in my chair while I'm reading that. So it's a, and see, Richard talks about that. The, uh, you know, we talk about we're in relationship with God and every, every creation, all of creation, all of creation is the incarnated with the universal Christ, the divine, what we call the divine. And that's why it speaks to me so deeply. I was telling you earlier that the um, the lesson I gave Sunday uh, on the 27th, the last day of the year last year, uh, every day is Christmas. And what I mean by that is every day is a day for incarnation. We're incarnated with this Christ spirit, the divinity of, of ourselves. And, and so is everything else. And then we are, in, once we realize that, then we're in relationship with all that. Yeah. Well, we've got to. is um is the re, is the theme that you're speaking about the time of unveiling yes that's it yeah because yeah. i thought that's really what i think it's about too that you already this is in us it's an eight it's inherent yes. and we're we're yet to discover it so it's a real peeling back and you hear that take another layer off peel the onion right it's an unveiling of this um, divinity of us. And what, regardless of your religious beliefs or your theological beliefs, that there is something that sourced us. There's something that breathed us into expression that is causing us to be here. So if you hear something today that's not a, in alignment with what you believe, it's fine. Try to make it as fine as you can. And then just listen in a way that's more open-minded to say, I can relate to that in some way still, which is then how am I going to a dial up my relationship with source? How am I going to unveil what is um, um, inherent and innate in me that's been covered over by belief systems, which I call BS, and that digging through the BS to say, I'm not, I'm not as willing anymore to let the BS be the dictator of my choices and the old system and the old thinking and the, the stuckness, the inertia of the 2000 years of this to be still governing me to say, I really do want to break through this. And even um, the, the notion, so I got read a story and put it in, it ended up putting in my last newsletter also, Ron, about some little girl that was doubting whether there was a Santa Claus or not. Mm -hmm. And she told her, um, her grandmother, who is the only one she could trust, that her grandmother always told her the truth. So she went running to grandma's house to ask her about this. And her grandmother gave her $10 and said, um, for you get to decide what you're going to do with this $10. Mm -hmm. And you're gonna learn about Santa Claus in your process of this $10, what mm -hmm. Santa Claus actually is and really is. And so she thought and thought and thought and thought and thought about it. 
And she thought of this one little guy in her class who didn't have a coat. Mm -hmm. And he couldn't go out to play because he didn't have a coat. And she asked her grandmother to take her to the store. And she thought carefully about what kind of coat he would like and what would be important. And she, she made the selection and brought the coat up and laid the coat and the $10 on the counter. Mm -hmm. And the cashier said, what's the story on this coat? What, who are you buying this coat for? So she told her it was a little guy in her class. He couldn't go out to play. And the grandmother pulled the tag off and handed it to the grandmother. And she put it in her Bible. And she got the coat and went and gave it to the little guy so he could have a coat to go out to play. And years later, she got the Bible and she saw that the coat cost $19.95. <laughs> and grandma said to her, this is how, what Santa actually is, that you get to be Santa every single day. The Santa doesn't come on the 25th of December. The Santa is coming every single day. And Santa's then dependent on us being Santa every other day of the year besides this. So it made me, it, it awakened me, obviously touched my heart. I'm still moved by it even now um, to think about the truth of that right. and the care in the use of $10. Mm -hmm. And where that's going to be, that's going to make a difference for my heart, that mm -hmm. I feel better about it, that I have been God in expression, and no telling what effect it had on that little guy that got to go out to play, mm -hmm. and on a cashier that got to witness this, and on a grandmother who got to teach something that's going to be handed down seven generations from now. That's right. Or beyond that. That's right. So, um, the universal Christ speak about that in terms of if you don't use the word Christ uh, how would you recommend that people approach the study or approach the devotion or the practice or the contemplation what how would you um, encourage us Ron to get around terminologies and verbiage that doesn't really align with us well even Richard Rohr says you don't have to use the word Christ it's divinity the divine the breath breath is a perfect um, um, uh, metaphor description for it and the beautiful thing now is with Richard Rohr at CAC is Brian McLaren he's another one of my favorite authors and he's comes from the evangelical uh, movement and he has some power and that's where I grew up I grew up very evangelical uh, it never the questions I had too many questions even as a kid they never that's why I'm here is because I couldn't get the answers so we've been celebrating, like you said, we've been celebrating this way for 2,000 years. Richard Rohr says, 2,000 years from now, we will be considered early Christianity because what we're doing right now is just now discovering, you know, the, the traditional Christian up to now has considered the one incarnation that we celebrate on, uh, that Christians celebrate on December 25th. The first, he says the first incarnation was creation itself. And so we can fall in love with, with the creation can be this, all creation is this. So I told my congregation um, uh, two weeks ago, a week ago, I said, so, so when you realize this, it's not egotistical. There's no ego in this because the second I realize that I can be in relationship with uh, what few trees I have left in my yard because the hurricane blew them all away, uh, the little lizards that run around, the uh, just what I'm, I'm in relationship with the universe with the, and definitely this planet and that we need to wake up to and be in a relationship with and, um, and with each other, uh, of course, with each other, even if we disagree, we can still be in a relationship with each other because this incarnation is in all of us. It's so, so powerful to hear that, Ron, even like in, I've always said the trees, when you can't find a teacher, let the te trees be your teacher. <laughs> And it's so much to that because in those trees will, some tree will come back. Some yes. tree will present themselves. And even the trees are not in harmony. What appears not to be in harmony sometimes because one's got a disease and one caught it and one's root system is tangled up in the other words. And then in some trees, they, it's like they got the wisdom to put their root system together 
Mm -hmm. And I've seen very graphic depictions of that where they knew they couldn't stand. They wouldn't be able to stand those storms and winds if they didn't bind their root systems together. So I've, I've used that metaphorically for congregations and families and things like that too. Yes. And that, and so, and that doesn't mean that there's some um, uh, little disharmonies yeah. here and there too. That's like right. like uh, some of you listening, if you've not had any disharmony yet, uh, just know it's your turn's coming. Uh, and that it's it's part of creation and a part of our creative expressions and our human learning processes and our emotional learning processes. So hopefully we can get a little bit more accepting of it and allowing of it and to absolutely then, um, you know, my mind used to go to saving the world, save the world, save the world. And it's like, there's just do anything today that's going to move us in that direction. So as I was writing about this, I used examples of like, call somebody that's on your heart or mind. If you see a bug that's uh, uh, struggling on its back, flip him over, flip her over, like do anything that's going to be to your mind, something heartfelt, something caring and something that's Christ-like. And if Christ is not your word, then compassion like yeah, compassion. Kinder. Yeah, in, in empathy. So there's so many examples of that. You're talking about what we have in common as you describe these compassionate things. Every one of us have this. No matter how hard a guy is, you know, in his heart, if he sees somebody in the ocean down here in the Gulf, he sees somebody that's struggling and swimming, he can't swim, he's gonna go no matter what he is, there's something in it. That's what we're that's what the universal Christ is, but that's yeah. the name we're given it. Yeah. And it, that, that inside of each one of us that will jump in the water to save somebody. Yes. And that nobody is saying, wait a minute, are you a good guy or a bad guy? Do you drink? Do you smoke? Have you been in jail? Do you speed? Mm -hmm. You know, do you cheat? Do you have affairs? It's like, I don't, uh, yes, yes. All of that, all of that's yeah, included probably. in the human <laughs> spectrum too. And there's still something innate in us that is um, of a divine heart, a divine placement of, of a caring heart and to be unveiled in some cases. So those emergencies and calls for help can do some immediate unveiling for some of us, even if we're pretending uh, still disguising as somebody that doesn't care or uh, doesn't love or is not into all of this somehow. So what I wanted to tell one thing about, about that, that seems so true. It's like the journey just keeps unfolding for me. I uh, found out about unity. Um, I, I found the unity church in Nashville. Uh, let's see, it's almost 40, 30 years ago. And, um, after a 12 step friend, uh, told me about it. And, um, and so as soon as I, you hear a lot of unity people say this when the first service, you know, I knew I was home. I knew it was for me definitely during the singing of the peace song that was for me. And then a lot of people have different expressions or feelings about that. But the idea that, that, uh, that what spoke to me was that God lives and moves and has being in me. And even God is a charged word. It was for me for lots of years, over 20 years, I wouldn't go anywhere near God because I was just spiritually bankrupt. And yet I heard that. And I heard the message that, it's and 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 that's the AA message, the uh, alcoholic anonymous. Uh, you know the recovery. That's the recovery message, is that it's my understanding of of my divinity. We didn't use that word either in uh, uh, recovery, and um, and then this is just a uh, you know this is all that teaching on steroids. The universal Christ is this a way of expressing that now on a different level that we know. And um, yeah. that's why I love it so deeply because it's just an extenuation of my journey. I think so too, but you've done a fantastic job, um, Ron, to weave this in. And um, the last time I spoke at the Unity in Nashville, I spoke, they were in a, pro they were in a study of the 12 steps. Mm -hmm. Whether or not you relate to yourself as an addict or a user or anything like that, there is absolutely spiritual support and spiritual unveiling for you and me, I believe in the 12 steps. So mm -hmm. I've always seen it, whether you recover or not, there is a spiritual grounding and a spiritual foundation and a path of spirituality in the 12 steps, whether you ever set foot in a church or not, 
there's a great deal of support for there. There's also a great book by Richard Rohr that I use for that called Breathing Underwater. Got that book as well. Um, was fantastic for me. And I ended up leading a weekly study in that for a few weeks that was very meaningful to people, even old timers Mm -hmm. um, that refer to um, their times around the mulberry bush and recovery that got a great deal out of a different approach to that and and seeing this. So I'd also now I'm really keen on hearing you speak more, Ron, about spiritual bankruptcy and 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 letting people know how how much of a reality that is, even with people in the churches, even with people in programs, even with people that are saved, um, yeah. that there is a tendency for us to experience spiritual bankruptcy or to to be in a in binds like that. So, how what would you say that what could you offer here today for listeners that maybe um, have some experience with that or some fear about that? So we, uh, uh, you know, growing up in a very evangelical fundamentalist uh, church, all it was was about all my life was as a kid and uh, teenager was going to church every time the door was open. And yet the met, we got all the stories and all the rules. There was just a series of rules. And yet it didn't go deep enough into me. It didn't. God was this anthropomorphic guy in the sky. And Richard Rohr talks about that too. That's not what God is to me. And I think it's moving beyond that. So, but what it did for me, um, because I was seeking and I couldn't find the answers, I couldn't find the answers outside. So it put a hole in my soul. What I described the spiritual bankruptcy, I could picture it so well. I had a, I walked around with a hole literally through my soul. And I describe it this way, right through my, uh, my, right through my torso. And it was empty. And so then I tried to fill it up with, you know, all these things that we get addicted to. All of us do to some degree. Um, and that's what Richard says too. We're all, addiction is a, some of us have it worse than others, but but we're all addicted. And this Breathing Underwater book book will let you see that. Let us all see that and, and lead us to this divinity that's within us. The answer is within. Um, so, uh, so the 12th step opened me up to that concept. It was a uh, counselor in when I was in treatment, 30-day in-person treatment. Um, oh, by the way, the people in treatment used to call me uh, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde because when we tell our stories about what our life was like before uh, recovery, uh, it's pretty amazing. All of us have, some of us have those. And, and it, it is a big part of my journey. It is my journey. And that's why I tell it uh, like this. But he, this, uh, he was an Episcopal priest we did therapy every day and it was almost like we were doing a, uh, the first step or, you know, recovery. And he asked me and he knew my background being uh, coming from an evangelical uh, church, uh, traditional Christian church. He asked me, he said, Ron, what's the difference between re- religion and spirituality? And I looked at him now, I've been, you know, at this point in my, in my mid thirties, I didn't have a clue. I, I said, I don't know. I don't know what you mean by I don't think I'd ever heard the word spirituality in my mid thirties. So he said, religion is man's attempt to incorporate God, to put God in a box. Spirituality is your chance to grow and be free in whatever you see that, uh, that you need to do and how spirit needs to come through you. Religion is man's attempt to put God in a box. He said really to incorporate God, which means put him in a box, him, uh, so th- that was the start of my journey. And that was that it's wow. so something so simple was the first time I'd ever heard and could even relate. Now, uh, it took lots of years to get in lots of other therapy, even outside of uh, even outside of uh, recovery meetings and and even outside of unity. But so if if you're if anybody has that feeling, it takes work. It takes work and find, keep searching. If you find something that doesn't work the first time, try something else. Doesn't mean to give up, just keep trying. Yeah, that's my encouragement too. And that it's, um, it does take work and it's W-O-R-K and the word work is called work for a reason. Yes. Um, that whatever your journey is that, um, and some people, even we read about sages and seers and mystics who had an awakening of some sort. Right. What you don't read, though, is after that awakening, they spent decades <laughs> unveiling 
do the work. They got a glimpse and they got a clue and then they work their butts off for three or four decades. And then before their books started hitting the shelves and things like that. So even those that had some spontaneous awakening got a glimpse of this and then still had the WORK to do and right. the hard work in some cases. So I say my fundamentalist upbringing put a passion in me to know God. I mean, it does, you know, there's one thing about evangelical fundamentalist church. It's all about love. And it took me a lots of years to be able to say that lots of forgiveness. Um, and yet that's the truth. Everybody loves everybody. You know, it's just like an extended family. So it put a quest in me for that, for that love a quest. And that's what I call God me. That's what, so it put a quest to know God. Now I went away. I couldn't say, couldn't do anything with church, couldn't do anything with God for over 20 years, more than 20 years. Uh, but I still had that passion to know unity, the, the, the unity thought process, what I learned from unity gave me my voice. Yeah. And what, what is that? What did unity do for you? Well, that, that the presence of God lives in me. There's, there's only one prayer. There's no duality. It's almost exactly what Richard Roy says today, non-dual thinking. There's only one. We're all one. That's what unity, that's the number one tenet in unity is there's one presence, one power that's in me. And, but, and then as soon as I see it in me, I can see it in others. Yeah. I can't see it in others until I see it in me first. Yeah. And that it's not, it comes and goes, you know, yes. we get glimpses of it because then how would, what would be your response to evil doings then and people doing evil things? Yeah, that's uh, th th even that for me, that, uh, that understanding, I read a lot about that. And um, so the evil is we, you know, in unity, one of the cliches or uh, that we call it is error thinking that there's some error thinking that goes on. There's only one presence and it's how we use that presence within us. We can use it for in the positive ways, of course, and then we all do. Even, even I realize that, but yet I still have error thinking and I mess up, hurt, hurt my family with thinking. And, um, and we wind up hurting that. To me, that's, quote, evil. Evil is error thinking, missing the mark. The simple thing is missing the mark. Yeah, which is how sin is classically defined, or literally, I guess, defined as a missing the mark of something, which is the goal for my life is not to do that. And I'm evolving and I'm learning. And I just noticed just as you and I were coming on the call and talking about, I'm leading a book study now with the universal Christ. Mm -hmm. And Ron is using it in his Sunday talks here and there and referencing in his daily devotional. So if you're listening to this, you're welcome to come on there. MarthaCreek.com will show you how to get connected to this. And it's really an exploration. And one of the statements I put in there in summary is it's the difference of seeing that um, that and, and you may believe that you're punished for your sins and I don't I'm not asking you not to believe that your beliefs are yours whoever's listening here uh, I believe that I'm punished by the sin that the sin is informing me that I missed the mark that the feeling I have in my heart the disconnection the closed downness of it the the cutoff from source, the um, not living out my own integrity is the punishment itself. So right. it's a direction to go in, not a, 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 pl um, a, um, a platform where we end up somewhere, not a destination we end up like, oh, I'm sin free. It's like, no, if you've got a pulse, we've still got some work to do here. So uh, it's more of a direction for life. And I was looking at my, I've got my teacher's manual here on the desk for this. And the, <laughs> you know, so here's, here's her uh, uh, the, with a little sin on mine, a little tea stain here. Oh. <laughs> and that right on the front page of this, folks, if you're watching this, if you're hearing this, and it says how a forgotten reality right. can change everything. How a forgotten reality can change everything we see, can change everything we hope for and change everything that I believe and only you can do that and Ron has laid out here very clearly that he believed um and was led to believe certain things that he couldn't believe and well, we I pretend believe, that we believe them about myself Martha I believed I was damaged good this hole in my soul it caused me to believe that I was damaged goods 
that's why the hole was there because I didn't have belief that, that I was worthy. And it was, again, not uh, throwing the evangelical or the fundamentalist church I was raised. And it's what came to me. It's not other people, uh, my, even my peers, my uh, teenage peers, they didn't receive that same message. It's what, it's what came to me. So um, that it was my journey, my work. And so that was the biggest thing too that I, I got from, from unity. And Richard Rohr just reinforces that. He says in, your, in the book, Universal Christ, he says, faith is basically accepting that you are accepted. Yeah. No matter what, no matter what. No matter faith, what, yeah. Faith is accepting that you are accepted, that I am accepted. That is, and that's the teaching that I think I knew was looking for. And now, you know, we've got a voice yeah. for it. Me too. And I'm grateful today. I'm still moved by the fact that I was alive in that as, at a very early age as mm -hmm. a little girl. Me too. That, um, that there's, whether they accept me or not, God has. Exactly. Whether they ordain me or not, God has. Right. And whether they include me or not, God has. And there's a great deal of power and empowerment and faith. And then all the powers, understanding, will, zeal, enthusiasm, life, love, order of letting go, telling the truth that comes through that kind of awareness of that faith. So a lot of gratitude for me and you. It's obvious, Ron, the gratitude that we have with our relationship with God and our understanding that we're just now glimpsing it also. We're early. We're early. <laughs> We're early, we're early, we're, early. We're, we're innovators here. That's right. And pioneering, and I've said it many times, and I love hearing that, that 2,000 years from now, we'll be considered the, the pioneers and the inno innovators of what Christianity was for us and is for us, and that uh, the, so, the seeds of that that are resonant with others will come in. That's right. I often ask in these times of these mentoring moments, um, if this message was going to be heard for 2000 years, if somebody just wore this thing out, if it went viral, mm -hmm. what would be the one message that you would want to convey to humans? If, if, if you could give them one message, what would it be? Whatever the, whatever the question, whatever the question, the answer is love. Just remember to love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just love. Yeah, thank you. And I'd say be, be, be sure it includes you. Yeah. Be sure it includes love of self yeah. and not this, this arrogant love of self, but yourself as an incarnate. That's right. The biggest of, of an expression of that. Yeah. Yeah. So if you want people to reach you, Ron, put it here in the um, recording on uh, the website for the ministry or your email or, or not just it's up to you if you want to do that now. Okay, I'll just put my email here. So this is a way to contact Ron if you've got questions for him or you want to tune into his Sunday services or join in any of his book groups or anything like that. It's Ron, R-O-N, at R-G, as in God, Holdaway, H-O-L-D-A-W-A-Y, Ron at R-G-Holdaway.com. And or then, um, at Gmail. Was it Gmail? No, that's my own domain. So it's that's, uh, that's your website. Got it. Got it. So yeah. it's uh, it's in the chat here. It'll show up on the visuals here now. So Ron at rgholdaway.com. So thanks again, Ron, for taking this time out to come in and well, to you. look to, for your own devotion, your own spiritual practice, for your leadership, and for my um, for our friendship and yeah. our. Well, you're. Uh, you're definitely part of my journey too. finding as we find each other. That's how we are awakened. Um, you know, we don't have, there's not a, there's not a God in the sky stirring us up. The grace of God comes from us. When I look into your eyes, I see the grace of God. So yeah. Yeah. I commit to, to um, being as clear as I can about that. Yeah. And I'm in devotion for it too. And passionate about it. Yes, you are. Yeah. So listeners, whatever you're about, dial it up. Be about what you're about and whatever you believe, to question what you believe, see if it's true, and then go forth. God speed and Buddha speed and whoever speed is your um, guru, your own speed, breath speed, nature speed, consciousness speed, universe speed, 
and know that there's love and support for you here. And if there's a way I can support you in any way, it is my, my assignment, my passion, my joy to do so. And MarthaCreek.com is the way to contact me. Until we be to meet again, be loved. Thank you, Martha. God you bless. are loved. Thank you, Ron. MarthaCreek.com, if I can support you. Blessings.